So he says here, so I station guards at the most vulnerable places. This is Nehemiah. What are your most vulnerable places? What are the areas that you know that it gets to you? So I have to build my faith up in healing. I have to build my faith up when it comes to finances. I have to build my faith up when it comes to restoration. What is that vulnerable area of your life that you know someone pushes that button, you are ready to knock them out or, or roll over and play dead, whichever way you choose to respond. <laughs> so what's that vulnerable area? He said, I station guards. I'm stationed guards. I'm stationing the word of the Lord. I'm stationing the angelic Lord. I'm stationing worship. I have my, my people around me that believe, that are like-minded. I don't need to hear people tell me about people who had this illness and I have an illness and they're dying. <laughs> I don't need to hear that. All right? So I stationed armed guards at the most vulnerable places of the wall and assigned people by families with their swords, their lances, and bows. Now, these people were ready for battle. They had their lance. They, this is all pertaining to the word of God. And after looking over, I stood up and spoke to the nobles and said, don't be afraid. And I'm telling you today, Peter was singing it to, uh, during worship, don't be afraid. The enemy wants to come and get us in with fear. Don't be afraid. Put your minds on the master. Focus on the great I am. It says here, he's great and awesome. And then fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, and your wives and your homes. Our enemies learned that we knew all about their plan and that God had frustrated it. When you're in faith, God is working behind the scenes. And it went back to the wall and went back to work. Let me just pause here. This is the area, too, that we have to watch that we don't get into self-pity. That we don't get into, like, well, if so-and-so didn't do this, I wouldn't be here. You know what? You're there. What's the point of trying to point your fingers? Just, just say, Lord, how am I going to get strengthened? Because we waste a lot of time. And it's like, you know what, Lord? I can't control what they do, but I can control and learn to grow and develop my spirit man in a way where I'm not going to live in defeat because of that person. I am not going to give them that power over me. And that's what we have to do. We have to just rise up and say, you know what? I'm not going to let that person drag me down. I'm going to bring that person up. Amen. So it says here, they, they, they were just, they were just warring and, and God had frustrated it. And from then on, the young men worked while the other ones stood guard. You see, they were alert. God is calling us to be alert, to discernment, to rise up, to not be asleep, to allow the spirit of the Lord to quicken us. The Holy Spirit warns us in advance. He shows us things. They, they, they were alert. You, you know, you, you're, when you're around people sometimes, it's not that you're judging them, but you're discerning something's not right. It's like, ooh, you know, I don't, I don't trust this one here. I don't, you know. That's the Holy Spirit a lot of time. But just watch your heart because God's not calling us to condemn people. He's calling us to be alert and to recognize what's happening but then to see how do we minister? What if that was you? Right? right. So um, anyway, so they, they were all, well, many military officers served as backup for everyone in Judah who were working, and they all held, held a tune. And then he says, I kept the trumpeteer at my side to sound the alert. Right. You know, that the shofar was always used, and that's the sound of deliverance. And then I spoke to the nobles and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, so there was, you see that back and forth. You see, like in, in, in Isaiah 37 and in Kings, it talks about Rabshakeh who does the same thing, who's constantly whispering and lying, you're not going to get ahead. Well, today I'm here to tell you that's a lie. And everyone right now that has had a week that where the enemy has said to you, or you had not even so much that he said to you, but you just felt defeated and you felt weary that there wasn't breakthrough or hasn't been breakthrough and, and trying to get you into that place of hope deferred, just stand up. Amen. Well, I'm here to tell you today that the enemy is a liar. And just as you see, look at all the people standing. Because this is what he does. I thought it was me earlier in the week. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And so, but God, he is a miracle-working God. And to know that God has bottled up your tears, and he has every hair upon your head numbered, that's how much he loves you. 
That's how much God has a plan for you. That's how much God wants you to see turnaround and experience this breakthrough in your life. You are not backing up. With If anything, you're moving forward. You are not allowing the enemy to steal your faith, to steal your belief system, to limit the Holy One of Israel. You're going to press forward. Amen? So uh, just, just, just tell the Lord. Just, well, first of all, I think you just need to tell the Lord, sorry for not trusting you. I mean, I had, this week I was like, Lord, I've been praying Proverbs 3, and I'm sorry that I got in my flesh. You see how that works? Your flesh is overriding your spirit to tell you this can't ever happen. You can't have breakthrough. You'll never get that job. Well, you know what? He has final say. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, Right? And that, Lord, you know, I'm not going to get so focused on what's not. I'm going to focus on who you are and that you are the God of impossibility. I, we've, we've all here have had miracles, and we've seen too many things. We've seen God break through in too many ways. And, you know, and that's what happens at times. We get stuck, and that's why David had to encourage himself in the Lord. That's why David had to say, oh, you know, you know my soul, you know, hope thou in God. As the deer panteth where the water brooks, Lord, so my soul longeth after thee. You know, because we have to break out of that. that, that I saw like a shroud that the enemy's been trying to place upon us with the Lord says, no, no, no. Today, there's a rising up. Today, the Lord says, today, today, this, this shifts. It's like, Lord, you know, you've been through the fires. You've been through hell. And the Lord is saying, grab hold of the word because you're going to see the miracle working power of God in your life. God wants to, 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 to cause that financial strain that you've been struggling in to shift or that need that needs to be healed or that depression that you're experiencing. God wants to break it off of you. But there, let me tell you something. Here's the other thing. We have to be determined. Like I had, there, there's a, there was, they were resolute in their decision. I don't care. I'm going to climb up that ladder. I'm going to build a wall. But I'm going to have that sword in my hand. And you come near me, I'm going to cut your head off. And the thing is with the enemy, that's what we can't just say, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just always getting beat by the devil. Well, he's going to always try to beat us. But then we have to just say, enough is enough. I've come to this place now where I am trusting God. And God, you said that the word is great, that I'm going to do greater things, greater. And so, Lord, I choose to trust you. I choose to believe you. Father, we just break off and we come out of that grip of the enemy. Let's try to clamp us and limit us. That grip of unbelief, that grip of doubt, that grip of hopelessness. We cut that thing off. We come out of agreement with that now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we choose to trust you. We choose to keep our eyes fixed upon you, oh God. We choose to lean on you and not our understanding. We choose to trust in you with all our heart, oh God. God. And we thank you, Father, that you are creating that breakthrough highway. Lord, we're not going to keep moving in the old. What are the things that, Lord, you're asking us to do? What are the things you're saying? Step out and believe. Step out and, and, and just decree the word of the Lord. Have communion every morning. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Just like Lester Sumrall, he just heard the word and things shifted. It's simple. Lord, we just thank you that we are not a passive people. We are a people that you have equipped. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious people, oh God. And we are not allowing the enemy to whisper and override the truth of the word that's been in our hearts. Lord, you have final say. So, Lord, we just say let God arise and our enemies be scattered. In Jesus' name, now I speak to that spirit of unbelief. I, we, we bind you and render you ineffective and powerless. We bind, muzzle, and gag you, and we loose the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit's brooding presence. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, we just say yes to your directions. I feel like some of you, the Holy Spirit has given you some direction, and, and you have disobeyed out of fear. Go back to that place. Ask Holy Spirit to give you another chance. He's a God of second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth chance. He's awesome. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your brooding presence. God, forgive us where we have walked in offense. We have talked against people. We have judged them. Do you understand? These are strategies of the enemy to hold you back. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your breaker anointing upon our lives.